Hello and welcome everybody to Advantage One RV. This is where we sell RVs on behalf uh, of their owners on consignment. Think of it kind of like real estate, except <laughs> you get to pull the house away when you're done. My name is Josh the RV Nerd. She's 2,905 pounds, a nice little clipper bunkhouse model. Um, actually, there was a time where the, the Clipper series like this, this uh, these little guys, they were the best selling single axle trailer on the marketplace. And they have really set the stage and kind of laid the groundwork for almost all the single axle trailer production that's out there today. This one has been owned by some folks that really took exceptional care of it. And they, they did a handful of small, not obvious things. One obvious thing, but it's not a bad thing. I don't want you to freak out when I say that. Um, they added a TV. There you go. But um, they like they changed the locks out. They added a roof vent cover. They did a couple nice little things to this. And the, there's something about this floor plan. It has a couple bunk beds, sure, but it could very easily work for a solo or couples camper. Or what if you're like a single parent and you just want to take your kid camping, but you don't want this big giant bunkhouse by light. This is a really good option, and at 2,900 pounds empty, before you load cargo, it makes for a really good pairing for a lot of tow package SUVs. And I say all the time how every manufacturer does something better than someone else. I actually think where this clipper kind of takes the cake for me is the total storage of it, because they there's like there's no gaps anywhere that they could. Uh, I mean, they they utilize every inch of this thing, I, and even like the nicer flip up kind of struts right there. You know, the extra little things that they do. But you've got like a halo of wraparound storage all the way above the bed space there. The windows all around this thing, especially that front flip up window. You, you, well, you have a flip up shield on top of a window, as it were, but it makes it look and feel pretty decent. Now that's a Camp Queen. That's a 60 by 74. You can see that there's a handle on there to lift that up. There's a massive underbed storage cavity under that thing. The folks just kind of put up a little board here, nothing fancy, so that they uh, probably their pillows stop sliding under that little headboard shelf. Now you see there's a set of outlets up there. So if you want to make that a little phone charger shelf, you could. But here's a cool thing you can do with these. And it's less scary to do it in the used RV market than versus modifying a brand new RV. If you just remove that headboard, which is not hard and really doesn't leave a whole lot of signature behind after you do that, you could turn that into a 60 by 80 true queen. The wolf pups that we carry down at Halet RV do something very similar. Now, I said there was one major thing the folks changed. They just added a TV here. It sounds actually kind of a cool uh, bracket. It just kind of flips up and locks in place. You can turn it whichever way you want. So you want to watch TV in bed. You want to watch TV from the dinette. You can do that. You can fold it up and get it out of the way. I'll probably show you some of that later. Uh, give you a little look here. We are carpetless. We are easy cleaning. Easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. <laughs> Free floating table with folding legs right there. One of the things I like about that, ooh, I like that position, that outlet. It's easy to reach. You can put in some phone chargers, maybe a tiny little coffee pot, whatever. But you can take that outside for picnic time. This could fold down to give it a potential fifth sleeping space if need be. Above that, you've got a stereo that uh, has a Bluetooth uplink. So if you want to hook that to your phone for some wireless activity, you could do that. Full size 13,500 BTU roof air. We'll turn this thing into an ice box if you needed to. For, that's You could argue that's actually overpowered for the size of the camper. Although I know that a lot of my friends down south or in the southwest would say, uh -huh, no, there's no such thing as too much air conditioning, dummy. <laughs> um the uh, refrigerator over here is gas and electric. So if you want to stay off grid a little bit, uh, you know, it, it's it's far easier in terms of like battery reserves. This RV does have a simple side mount solar prep uh, unit. So if you want to get a little portable panel, you can. And where I'm laying right now, if you were laying in bed, this would roughly be your view right here. And again, you can remember, you can turn that TV if you want to, to give you some easy viewing. Um, you know what, let's take a look at this. Let's get this out of the way. Take a look through the uh, the cabinet space that we have here. One of the things that's nice on this one, and it's actually lost on a lot of newer campers, is that big, tall pantry space. I did see that the folks added some extra shelving over there, probably to really maximize the total dry storage on this one. I could be wrong. I could be mistaken. And it could just be because these folks took really good care of this thing. But it sure doesn't look like them bunks got a whole lot of use. There's not a whole lot of butt buckets where people might have sat and laid on that thing or nothing like that. Wait, wait a minute. 
do not exceed 300 pounds. Um, <laughs> is that a bunk load rating or is that just general health advice, coachman? Please advise. Sticker telling me how to live my life. I'll eat all the bacon I want. Thank you. I'll die fat and happy. I'll just die prematurely. <laughs> anyway, uh, the uh, this is a full dry bath, meaning a separate toilet and shower, which is nice. And I, you know what? There's a lot of people who build these single axle little guys. I think that this is a well-executed bathroom because we have both the shower surround paneling and that handy skylight instead of shower surround paneling or a handy skylight. And right now, actually, uh, I went ahead and I left this vent open so that you could see there is a roof vent cover up there. And that would be, that vent right there to me, it is just begging to be upgraded to one of those like big vortex hangs fans. That's H-E-N-G-S. That is pound for pound, dollar for dollar, the least expensive. And I, I feel pound for pound the best way to get one of those big high velocity exhaust fans. Now, at the time of this filming, I haven't had a chance to fully look up the specs on this one, but just knowing what I know about them, it's pretty much 20-foot tip-to-tail, tongue-to-bumper. Uh, manufacturers like to use the smaller model numbers to kind of usually denote either box size or walkable floor space. Sometimes it's square footage, not always. But uh, in this case, it's about 20 feet tip-to-tail. It's also only 7 foot wide. So again, if you've got that uh, tow package SUV, uh, I have to double check the specs, but maybe 4,500 pound tow rating or higher, higher would obviously be better. Um, then, uh, you know, it's, it's not so intimidating behind you. You can see around it more easily, but folks, please get some towing extension mirrors. Don't, just, just don't do it without those. Why, why spend all the money on the trailer and then skimp on a frankly very low dollar safety item. It's never made sense to me, but I see people do it every day. And I think it's because people focus so much on the actual purchase of the RV that they don't think about all of the other things. It's hilarious to me actually. Wow, 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 that's a big compartment. Sorry, that kind of took me by surprise. I forgot how big those are up front on these. But uh people will spend years purchasing or, or well picking out and then purchasing the one you know highlander there can be only one and once they finally narrow it down they look at you and go so do you know where i can take this thing <laughs> and uh maybe sometimes some tidbits like hey get some towing extension mirrors maybe those little th safety things will help uh help you out a little bit that's why we like to throw that extra information in there now back here this does deadbolt it has a different kind of key lock because they swapped the locks out but if i open that up you see that that's a nice bunk cargo space. Now, the manufacturers really like to refer to that as a bike cargo area. Maybe a little kid's bike. I don't know if an adult bike's going to fit in there unless you can kind of half disassemble it, take it down a little bit to turn some handlebars. Um, the, the roof of this is walkable, by the way, which is a nice little care maintenance upkeep thing. You're going to need a separate ladder to get up there, but it is a walkable roof. That is a power uh, awning. Or, no, I'm sorry. Pardon me. That is not a power awning is what I meant to say. It sure looks the part though that actually is a manual awning. What's interesting is that this is a Lippert Solera manual awning, but they make Lippert Solera power awnings. It's one of the only manual awnings out there that has effectively a factory upfit kit to turn it into a power awning. Ooh, ooh, I almost missed that because it's, it's like black on black. We got ourselves a hot, cold, outside camp utility shower here. Ooh, and they, yeah, yeah, we bumped the rear corner a little bit. Doesn't look major, but if I see something, I'm going to say something. Even if I think it's minor and only cosmetic, you deserve to know about it. Because this is used, but it's new to you, so it still feels new. Uh, up front there, you've got a simple side mount solar prep plug. And let me give you a uh, run down the roof here, uh, looking at the, the membrane, the seals. The roof has been fantastically kept, and it's always really been my experience. If someone's willing to take care of the roof of an RV, which is inconvenient, then it stands to reason they're going to do all the other easier, convenient stuff, and it sure looks like that's what happened here. So give us a call if you need hitching, if this is your very first RV, and you need to kind of be shown a little bit of how this works, we can take care of you on all that stuff. That's one of the benefits of working with our family owned and operated place and not throwing shade at like residential real uh, realtor type person. That's just a different job. But where we differ is that we actually can go through hands-on, show you the functions and the ins and outs of stuff if you need. And if you're an experienced RV and you're just ready to hitch up and head on out, give us a call, we can take care of that too. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.